when you start creating content on a platform, it's a monetary, they give you money for your content. A lot of social media platforms don't really pay you as much as YouTube will. Instagram completely stopped paying people for reels. TikTok pays you pennies, right, for millions of views. Like literally somebody made like $70 off of like 20 million views, it was crazy, right? But YouTube is super fair and it allows the creator to actually monetize their content through ad revenue, sponsorships, um, you know, brand deal, or not only brand deals, but also like um, membership buttons. So you can have actual paid subscriptions on there where people are paying you per month to be subscribed to your channel for like extra content from you. And, you know, they also added Shopify stores on there. You can sell merch on there all through the YouTube studio dashboard. So wow. it's just really a big way for people to make a lot of money, especially as a beginner coming in. Like a lot of people sometimes watch YouTube and they don't even know that these people are getting paid money. And then on top of that, it's not like a transactional thing where it's like, oh, okay, I have this thing and I'm gonna sell it to you and you have to get a bunch of sales. It's literally just a view on the video. You make great content, people watch it, they see an ad and you get paid from that. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a, a business with no customers, right? Yeah. You can literally get views and get paid like that without it ever talking to anybody, just, you know, doing your content and doing your own thing. And so that's that's a really big, you know, thing that I kind of realized, too, because when I was like working my nine to five, I was always talking to people and I kind of got tired of like, you know, customer service and all that. So I'm like, I want to do something where I ain't really got to talk to people like that. So for a beginner, that's something to really look at, too, as far as the monetary and also just, you know, not being not having to like have customers and all these things going on. You're just Yo, focusing on your content. So this is a real business. Oh yeah. My goal is to help coaches and entrepreneurs turn their mind into money, teaching them how to take what they know, package it, market it, sell it, and automate it to make a massive income and massive impact, even if they don't have a lot of followers on social media. If you're watching this video, you're about to make a whole lot of money. Welcome back to another episode of Monetize with Marcus. Listen, the goal of our podcast is to show you how do you turn your mind into money. In the information age, there is something that you know that you can help someone do more, become more, or have more by teaching them. So I get a chance to teach you as well as bring on phenomenal guests who are killing it in the space and they're generous with their time and their information sharing it with you. Well, today... I've got brother, a friend, we met ooh, almost a year ago and I, I watched him blaze the stage and I had never heard the business behind YouTube. I thought it was just a platform that you watch TV on or you watch shows on or you study, but he understands all the elements of how you can make a lifestyle out of this. My brother, my guy, David. Yo, Mari, what's up, man? What's going on, Marcus, man? Appreciate you for having me, man. Man. It's always good, bro. Feelings mutual, man. I, I like... The reason I vibe with you, man, you didn't know me from a year ago. We didn't even know, we know each other. other yeah. And you sat down and started just telling me, yeah, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Yeah, yeah here's what I do with my channel. How yeah. you? I give you my thumbnail yeah. person. I'm like, who, who, get, who builds a multi-million dollar business and decides to just give that information away? Right. Like, why are you so generous with the information when people are yeah. gatekeeping it? Yeah, it's because, bro, I just, I'm so passionate about it. Like, I've been passionate about YouTube forever, and I'm just always excited to, like, tell people. Like, even when I started, I was always telling friends and family, like, yo, you got to get on, you got to do this, you got to do this, because, you know what I'm saying, I never seen that kind of money coming from something where I didn't have to put my time in as far as, like, you know, nine to five working, right? Because the money was, the way it was coming in, it was just coming in passively after the videos were uploaded, so... I was just super excited and so i'm always excited to share with like fellow youtubers people that are creators starting on the channel that got channels i'm just always willing to give that game because i want to see them be successful too especially wow. from what i learned you know wow yeah man i want to go i don't want to start from the beginning of the journey i want to yeah. start somewhere different man yeah yeah let's do uh we can get into the backstory and all that later right okay like, they, they can see your name underneath it like yeah, you know yeah. some some podcasts but tell them who you are in yeah. the episode and the thumbnail says david amari, amari right yeah, <laughs> facts, facts. right here's where i want to start bro i want to start at the day you looked up and you realized i got a hundred thousand subscribers Man, where bro. were you? What's the feeling like? Take me to that moment because that's man, the journey. People that get was that. like that was like the first man. So I was in my first apartment with my wife and man, I remember live streaming that whole moment. Like I still got the live stream somewhere on one of these channels. I got I remember staying up late um, and just watching that ninety nine thousand go to a hundred thousand. bro. It was crazy. Like so much support. I think we had like five thousand people live on the live stream. 
it, it was an amazing, you know, moment for me. But when I when I got the actual plaque tangible in my hand, bro, oh man, that feeling was like, yo, yeah. I need I need to keep going. I want the gold plaque. I want the <laughs> diamond. I want all of them. Right. I became a plaque hunter. So that moment was just phenomenal for me, bro. Like that's what it was kind of like my degree. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I, I never finished college. So when I got that, I was like, okay, I got my first YouTube degree. This the undergrad, the bachelor's. <laughs> now I gotta go for the master's and a, and a doctor, all that, bro. So I seen it as that, and that's kind of like what like filled that void for me, not completed college. So wow. it was a big month, like big moment for me. Man, let's. So for anyone who doesn't understand, you said the goal, the name, some of the different plaques. Right, like, right, right. Break down what is that? How do you receive those plaques? What mm -hmm. are those milestones if someone's trying to get them? I want one. Right. right. Like, how does that work? So so far, I believe there's five. So the 100,000 subscriber plaque is once your channel surpasses 100,000 subscribers, YouTube will send you a notification on your dashboard and it will allow you to basically go and fill out some code and then redeem your award and then they'll mail it to you. Then when you get to a million subscribers, they send you a gold plaque, right? So when you surpass a million subscribers, they send you a gold plaque with that same setup. You get a letter from the actual YouTube, like um, I believe it's like the head CEO on YouTube, like they hand write you a letter with your name on it and like congratulating you. Um, and then after that, it's the 10 million play button, which is the dime. Like that's the one I don't got yet, but I'll, whoo, that's what I'm like. I can't stop doing YouTube until I get it. Yeah. So that's the 10 million. And it's like a, this big a diamond, like play button in this big, like Chrome award. And it's like, it's so it's crazy. It's heavy and everything. Right. And then after that, I believe there's a 50 million award. Yeah. I think it's a 50 million award, but the 50 million award is a custom it's like your custom logo, I think. Mm. Either it's the 50 million or the 100 million. I think it may be the 50 million because I know PewDiePie got his, he got some type of award for 50 million, but may, it may have just been that time um, because, you know, at that time nobody had reached 100 million. And then, of course, Mr. Beast reached 100 million and then he got his Jeez. plaque. And that's crazy. So those are all the plaques. And that's like, that's the highest that anybody's ever gone um, on YouTube as far as subscribers. And so, Right now, my, my motion is just getting to that 10 because that is like, it's not a lot of people that I know. Like, I, I know like a few people that got it, like personally, but it's really rare for somebody to have that because that's a lot of people, bro. Like 10 million people <laughs> clicking one button yeah. is crazy. Yeah. So, well, so which, which ones have you been able to accomplish so far? So I have four 100,000 subscriber plaques from four completely different channels. Once you get your first 100, uh, excuse me, 100,000 subscriber plaque, you don't keep getting them if you hit 200,000, 300,000. It's only one for when you hit that milestone one time. So I did it on four different channels and I actually literally have one that's about to come in the mail soon because I have a new channel we started this year that's at 60,000 subscribers and it just hit 60,000 like yesterday, right? So we're gonna get another 100,000 subscriber plaque so it'll be five. And then I have one gold uh, YouTube play button which is the million, right? For surpassing a million subscribers on a single channel. So. I have about five plaques now, but it's about to be six. I'm just gonna keep going because I'm not. I'm not gonna stop, bro. Listen, <laughs> it, listen, man. You out. You out here like J, like Jay Z and Kanye, man, platinum bro. plaque after I need, platinum. I need plaques, bro. I'm a <laughs> plaque hunter. But that's that's a different. So it's so much to unpack in this. Yeah. Because in the world of YouTube, some of us are on the side of the, on the consumer side. Right. Right. We are binge watching our favorite podcast. Mm -hmm. We are watching whether it be shows or now you, you listen to music on there mm -hmm. or down the line. Mm -hmm. So for someone looking to get into YouTube, man, let's let's dig into the business of it. You right. mentioned five different channels, which we got to go into that. But yeah. the big part I'm, I'm I'm thinking about is for someone looking to get into this, why would they want to get into you into being a YouTuber? What's right. the business behind it? Why, so why do it? The beautiful thing about it is when you start creating content on the platform it's a monetary, they give you money for your content. A lot of social media platforms don't really pay you as much as YouTube will. Instagram completely stopped paying people for reals. TikTok pays you pennies, right, for millions of views. Like literally somebody made like $70 off of like 20 million views, it was crazy, right? But YouTube is super fair and it allows the creator to actually monetize their content through ad revenue, sponsorships, um, you know, brand deal, or not only brand deals, but also like, um, membership button so you can have actual paid subscriptions on there where people are paying you per month to be subscribed to your channel for like extra content from you and you know they also added shopify stores on there you can sell merch on there all through the youtube studio dashboard so wow. it's just really a big way for people to make a lot of money especially as a beginner coming in 
Like a lot of people sometimes watch YouTube and they don't even know that these people are getting paid money. And then on top of that, it's not like a transactional thing where it's like, oh, okay, I have this thing and I'm gonna sell it to you and you have to get a bunch of sales. It's literally just a view on the video. You make great content, people watch it, they see an ad and you get paid from that. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a, a business with no customers, right? Yeah. You can literally get views and get paid like that without ever talking to anybody, just, you know, doing your content and doing your own thing. And so that's that's a really big, you know, thing that I kind of realized, too, because when I was like working my nine to five, I was always talking to people and I kind of got tired of like, you know, customer service and all that. So I'm like, I want to do somewhere. I ain't really got to talk to people like that. So for a beginner, that's something to really look at, too, as far as the monetary and also just, you know, not being not having to like have customers and all these things going on. You're just Yo, focusing on your content. So this is a real business. Oh yeah. This is not just, like if you go somewhere, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. We were in we were in Mexico or something like that, me and a few other people. And it's an older, older, um, older guy mm -hmm. and his wife, I won't say that, that nationality. Mm -hmm. And they kept asking, hey, what do you guys do? Because they saw all of us with our phone yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know how you are, you go on vacation. Yo, what's yeah, up? This is, yeah, what do you yeah. guys do? Are you guys like influencers or something? Because that's the yeah. early time they know. Yeah. And so they're trying to figure, they're like, so did you guys get where you're staying comped? Because they mm. can't understand like, how do you actually make money off of this? Right, thing? right. But I know you're extremely successful, multimillionaire. Mm. You know, congrats. I saw you just treated yourself to, to yeah. a Lambo. Yeah, appreciate that, bro. You know, you're driving nice, brother. Yeah, yeah. Lambo, <laughs> little G-Wagon, yeah. couple other whips. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just, a, and I know you enough to know it's not just about those things. Nah. However, it's important for people to know that this is not just some hobby. If you no. take this serious, this is a real you business. Really in essence, crazy. you get to be in business with YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, how does somebody go about getting to that place where they're actually getting paid for their content? A lot of people say, yeah. hey, you get paid for content. What's yeah. that journey? So, you have to become a person in a partner program, right? You got to get approved into the partner program. So. Traditionally, it's a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. But just recently, like last week, they lowered that threshold. So now you only need five hundred subscribers and I believe three thousand watch hours to get into the partner program. Now you still got to grind to that thousand and four thousand watch hours just to get the um, you know ads turned on on your page. But that's now just a feature that can be turned on or off. But now getting into the partnership program and actually becoming a partner with YouTube, you only need 500 uh, uh, what's called subscribers in a uh, 3,000 watch hours. I wish they would have changed that a long time ago. Bro, when I started, it wasn't even like that. You could just sign up. No background check, no resume, no interview, none of that. Just get on, create a Gmail account, turn on it, and then do your verification with your phone and you're done. And wow. you was literally getting paid. Like when I first like really got in, like I literally was like making a bunch of channels. I was like, yo, I can have different channels just making money without them questioning what I do. Nothing. Right. I'm paying my taxes on that money. It's good. So it was like, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying almost like how DoorDash was like when they first started. Like you could just go walk to DoorDash and sign up and then you could go do your thing. Yeah. It's the same. It was the same thing. And then they added that because they just wanted to see more value in the platform with the creators that really was taking it serious to really create content right so when they put that threshold they know okay if we put a threshold people are going to do their very best to make the best videos right to get to that and guess what it's going to keep more people on the platform the platform is going to make more money and in return the uh you know creators are gonna make more money it's all a business bro, bro it's all about money ton, ton is in here ton no we've been on the journey man we yeah. started we started all over with this page that this is even on mm -hmm. to get the four the four thousand bro here's what's crazy yeah. i'm on here with the youtube goat yeah. bro we just yesterday hit the number Wow. Just hit 4,000 views. Wow. Hey, 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 man. What, Congratulations. When I say that was harder than followers, I say the getting them views hour, was harder than time. getting the seven figures. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm serious, bro. Yeah. Those watch, watch hours that watch is, a, is a monster. Yeah, bro. A beast to get to. And, and I see it I see it as a, as a monster sometimes, too. Um, but it's, it's really just leveraging the relevancy in the market right and just knowing what really is going to pop and then that's how you can get those crazy view videos and then that'll take care of watch like i was looking at my dashboard yesterday um we had a video that got like fifty thousand views in less than 24 hours and the video alone had three thousand watch hours and i'm just like bro that's like you know what i'm saying like wow yeah and that, that channel's already monetized and everything but it's like in the very beginning it may seem like it's a far goal to reach and it's hard to get to it but once you understand like the rhythm and how youtube really works it's something that can be done in like 14 days. Like a lot of my, my clients and my students, 
they typically like spend like two weeks. Like a lot of them just two weeks, they get this one video. And I don't know if you've been seeing like my post where I throw like a carousel and at the end I throw like a student mm -hmm. result. Most of those clients literally just took them two weeks to get monetized because they just followed the formula and the framework with the whole YouTube automation business model and they got monetized. Yo, so here's why I like podcasting. Yeah. I get a chance to ask questions that I want to know the answer to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's get it. And simply do it. So I'm going to go backwards, go forwards. So you've been able to build multiple channels. Mm -hmm. This YouTube actually is a business. Yes. So in essence, when you start the partnership program, you're partnering with YouTube where they are sharing revenue, ad revenue with right. you. That's how it works. They're sharing. Right. So the business model in essence is you're becoming a stakeholder, an actual partner with YouTube, mm -hmm. where by creating content, you get to share in the ad revenue on that platform, unlike any other platform. Right. You mentioned about five different channels. Before we go into some of the strategies, mm -hmm. you said when you first got on, mm -hmm. none of these barriers. How long have you been in this space? 10 years. Wow. 2013. We've got to pause right there because I'm in the giving mood. I decided to offer you a free gift. Absolutely free. Now, I tell you all the time about turning your ideas into online income, but how am I going to tell you to do something and not provide the resource for it? There's so many questions that people have online about what should I post? How do I get my engagement up? How do I get people to click the link in my bio? Buy from me. What should I sell? Whether it's an ebook, an online course, how much should I charge? How do I launch? How do I do a webinar? You see what I'm saying? So I decided to create a free training and give it to you that you can utilize to learn how to literally take the services that you do or the ideas you have and build a successful online company. Go to www.monetizewithmarcus.com, my gift to you. You're welcome. Yep. Yo, you man, put some respect on your name. Yeah, I, a I decade, bad. bro. Man, I, messed, I need to call you Mr. David Amari. <laughs> 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 hey, I ain't yeah, calling you by your first name. Sir, I got a doctor degree in YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> man, I've been in that job. Eight <laughs> years in regular school. You 10 years in the game. 10, bro. And I'm not stopping, bro. I need years. at least, I need, bro. I need How, to be in that joint. Like, why? How'd you get it? Like, how'd you even hear? None of us was even thinking about this I just side was, of YouTube. Man, bro, I just, man. I was just in a situation in my life where I was consuming the content, and I was seeing so many people my age get their dream cars, dream homes, like, doing so much at a young age, and I was just like, man, this is, like, possible. And they all just following their passion, vlogging their lifestyle, or, you know, doing gaming content, right? basically showing off the game and whatever they doing it and they going crazy like in real life. So I was just really motivated and inspired to do it. And I always been creative, but I did not know I was creative until like my 12th grade year in high school. I was put in some like class that I had to take to graduate because I didn't know that it was gonna, I didn't know there was a class I needed to take in my freshman year because they didn't, they had messed me up or something like that. But it was like a digital arts class, right? So I was like, oh, I'll just take it, cool. So I got in a digital arts class and I just start kind of playing with Photoshop and all these little like, you know, softwares. And I really liked like doing what I was doing. Like, I was really enjoying creating. And so that's where the bug kind of like, you know, first came. And then after I kind of like got into this YouTube thing, I start playing with the game clips and putting it on like video editors and all this stuff. I was playing like Garage Band, playing with iMovie, all this stuff. But I was super interested in like, I'd be spending hours like, you know, making videos and stuff. And so that's really where it kind of sparked the interest and then when I saw other people doing it that looked like me and was going crazy I said I gotta try it out and so that's really where it like kind of got me into like going hard and doing it and so you know when I did start um, it wasn't like all sunshine and rainbows like I wasn't instantly going crazy I had a sneaker channel at first where I was on there just showing shoes and everything like my Jordans that I'll pick up the Yeezys I was trying to like hit on the apps I don't know if you remember them days yeah. you try to hit on Adidas confirm so like, bro, I was like, man, this is not scalable. Like I got every time I got to win Adidas confirmed to get a million views. Like, I'm not about to do that. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? I'm not about to take these YouTube checks and put it back in the uh, sneakers. Why not? I just transition to gaming where I spend all the time all day on the game. Anyway, I might as well start making some money from it. Right. And so I made a gaming channel, got 100 views on a video. Right. With a channel with zero subscribers, nothing. Right. So then after that. A month later, I said, you know what? Let me analyze this. Let me see how I did that. Because the channel was zero subscribers, getting 100 views. How did that even happen? I didn't promote this to nobody. Yeah. Like, I literally said to myself when I started this gaming channel, I'm not sending this to my friends, my family, nothing. I want the support from the people who are actually going to see the content and want to watch it, right? Not from people that they're just going to subscribe. You know, oh, this is my, my brother or my cousin's page, but I know they're not going to watch the content. So completely forgot about that, right? And then a month later, I said, let me try it again with everything I know now while analyzing this platform. Half a million views in two weeks off a single video. Wow. 
And from that day, I never stopped uploading on YouTube. When you say gaming, like what what is that? So For somebody don't know because I'm I'm very unfamiliar. Yeah, I just yeah. I just bought a PS5. Yeah. And I'll tell you my laughable story. I know so little about gaming. My first game that I the last time I played games before that was I don't know. Do they still make Call of Duty? Yeah. I had Call of Duty and I had the regular PS. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I I go recently. My friends like, bro, you need something to do to just chill out so you ain't Got working to. all the time. Yeah. I walk into Best Buy. And I was like, yeah, I want to get a PS5. The guy Paul's looked at me. He was like, oh, you're serious? Yeah. I was like, yeah. He starts laughing. Because it's not. You can't just walk in the store and get one. Bro, in like, my head, I'm like, if you want the game, y'all sell yeah. them. Let me go buy them. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he was like, try GameStop. I go to GameStop. And they look. Lucky. I was like, hey, I'm looking for a PS5. They look. And it was like, you're serious? Mm -hmm. That same, yeah. that same mm -hmm. process, yeah. bro. I'm so out of the loop. Yeah. How do you make money uploading games? Are you recording? You playing the game? Like, Yeah, so I did it faceless. So I would have gameplay recorded from the console. Then I would take it and transition it to my laptop because it would be posted on this site. I used to have, like game heavy on Xbox. So Xbox had this DVR site where I could literally upload all of my footage there, right? And then I could take it, put it in the video editor and start chopping it up. And then I would add my own voiceover on it, add my own instrumental music that I would like look up on YouTube that, you know, songs that I liked that was popping at the time. And then I would just upload the video. And then that was that. Was that. Really? Yeah, bro. It was it was playing a, a game that you love. Yeah. Recording it. Yeah. Uploading it and getting paid for playing video games, bro. Yeah. If you didn't find a lottery ticket, <laughs> I was really going crazy, bro. Like it, that that whole like nowadays is not. I'm not heavy in the gaming no more. But when I first started out, like that's where I really struck gold because I was like, yo, I'm really into this game, and I know that it's gonna keep going far. It was GTA as well. I was playing right. So GTA 5 to what, be specific. What's GTA? So Grand Theft Auto was like almost like a real life simulator game, but gotcha, gotcha. it's like you you probably I seen it I, before. I remember Grand Theft Auto, man, yeah. back in the day. See, I didn't even know they still made these yeah, games. Yeah, the new one is crazy, bro. You gotta you gotta get the GTA 5. But that's really what turned me up because people seen that game and they want all the cars in the game, they want all the mansions in the game, and I was the guy who was teaching them how to make the money to get it. So that's how I was leveraging that to get views. Wow. Yeah, bro. I was teaching people how to make money in the game. Now I'm teaching people how to make money in real life. Wow. So you mentioned you have, what's the, what's the value and the benefit of having multiple channels? So the reason I have multiple channels is because, number one, multiple audiences. I don't want to cram all of my audiences together on one channel because personally for me, I've never had success. I, I, I had success on one channel, but... For all the other channels I tested it, I never saw success from putting multiple games on one channel. Because guess what? Let's say we talking about Grand Theft Auto, right? And I put out a video about, uh, what's it called, Sonic or something like that, right? People are not going to watch that video because everybody subscribed to me because they want to watch GTA videos, mm. right? So the same thing with the, if I was to do all these different games on one channel, they're not going to tap in and it's going to hurt my channel. It's going to hurt my growth because they're not watching all the videos. Right, YouTube saying, okay, this, they're not interested in this. What does that mean? They're not going to be pushing content out to new viewers, and that's the whole point, right? And also keeping people on the platform for a long time. If your watch time, your average viewer duration is short because there's not a lot of people interested in that specific topic, then they're not going to click on it. So I had to, by like default, make another channel. If I'm super interested in whatever this topic is, if it's a game, if it's just a top 10 channel, whatever, sports channel, anything, you have to make a different channel every single time. And that's just me personally, I've seen the most success from doing that, mm. right? Because now when I'm growing a loyal audience on a specific channel, I know that I can keep getting views over and over and over and over if I keep on delivering what the viewer wants to see. It's all about the viewer. Like the customer is right. The viewer is always right. It's always about the viewer. It's what the viewer wants to see. Yeah. So if I know the viewer wants to see more of this content, I got to deliver on that. If I want to try something else, just make another channel, follow my same framework. And then let it keep going with that. Bro, let me ask for what, for like, let's say for people like myself mm -hmm. who entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches in that yeah. space, right? So, you know, we're leaning heavy into this building out of a media company, right? It's right. not just Marcus as a brand, nor is it mm -hmm. just my education company. Right. It's actually a media company. Right. Do you feel like for each, let's say if you got multiple shows, should yeah. each show have its own page? So, I I would say yes. And if I was to do it myself, that's how I personally would do it. But I know so many big media companies that do it on like one channel, earn your leisure, one channel, right? Um, 
there's think media one channel there's so many different companies like that that do it all on one channel and they are successful so i'm not gonna say you wouldn't be successful i say definitely try it out keep it all in one place but if you pivot real hard to something completely different that's when i would say like okay try and take that and put it on a different like say for example you want to start vlogging right like you just want to start vlogging your daily life as an entrepreneur that's content for a completely different channel Gotcha. That's not like a part of, you know, the podcasting and everything you got going on right here because this focus now solely on you, not the media group. Gotcha. Right. So that's what that's what gotcha. I would say. Yeah. So with something like that, mm -hmm. for anyone who's listening, to, like, you know, most entrepreneurs now are yeah. getting into the podcast space. So they might have a page of just their name. Let's use yeah. this like Marcus right. Walrosa. Right. You might also have a company page mm -hmm. where you're putting out content related to or following different channels, et cetera. It's like the brand and the business behind that media. So let's yeah. say Rain Media, right? That's his own channel. Marcus Wall Roger is his own channel. Right. Then let's say we have the name of a show. Mm -hmm. That show could have his own channel. Right. And it's kind of behind the scenes, everything related to that. Right. I like it a lot. Yeah. How difficult is that to manage for someone who doesn't have a team? Like I'm I'm blessed that I have a team. You're blessed that you have a team. Yeah, yeah. But what if, what about someone who don't have staff, don't have team? So so I'll tell you a story. Um when I got to my point in my YouTube career, I had these two channels. One channel was at half a million subscribers. The other one was at 200,000, managed by me. I got to a point to where I was spread so thin, like with family time, with work-life work balance, I was spread so thin that I was forced to like, okay. But this because I had two channels. If it was one channel, I would have been fine. But two channels, I was literally forced to go and look into the YouTube automation business model where I'm now outsourcing all the elements of the YouTube videos and the content. So once I transitioned, that's when I had to get the script writer, the voice actor, the video editor, right? The thumbnail artist, right? To where I can completely take myself out of the loop and still be able to make a lot of money with multiple channels. That is the best way mm -hmm. to manage multiple channels. Now, if you're a face channel where you have a company and everything, you still gonna need that team. You're gonna need that video editor. You're going to need that person that's going to be able to, you know, do the voice audio and like make sure the audio is good. You're going to need that setup team and all that stuff. Right. So with multiple channels, you need a team. It's, it's not something I mean, it's something you can do if you have the time, but it will get stressful. You'll get burned out and you don't want to give up. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of money in this thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, man, I. Man, your story is amazing. And just this whole process on down the line. Appreciate that, bro. I want. You're, you're brilliant at what you're doing, your wealth of knowledge, and we'd be doing a disservice to the audience to not you just give them the game because yeah. you teach people how to do some of the things you've done, right? Right. Which is amazing. So if someone, we're going to grab a few different people. Mm -hmm. David Amari now, who has five channels, who has multiple plaques, mm -hmm. versus David, who just got started, didn't know what he was doing. What would you say to the old you who was just getting started? What are the first three things they should focus on? Number one, um, once you find a competitor on a platform, you have a blueprint. So never feel like you don't know what you have, you don't know what you're doing. You always have a blueprint if you have a competitor, right? If there's something you're interested in that you've seen and somebody's doing it really well, you can do it just like them. There's nothing special between any of those people. You can do it. So that's number one, what I would tell myself. Number two is I would get a mentor. Even though I did this all self-taught, if I would have had a mentor, Bro, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a decade. It would have been like a year, two years, right? Of me just learning from somebody who actually been doing it, right? And went through all the mistakes, made all the mistakes that I made. I mean, I've lost a channel, right? I've been hacked. I've been copyright strike, community guideline strike, all the things that can happen bad on YouTube. I've been through all of it and I've survived every single, you know, trial on YouTube, right? So somebody like that, that knows how to avoid those mistakes, you need to be looking for somebody to teach you so you don't have to go through that stuff because some people they lose the channel and they washed out they don't even want to do it no more because they're yeah. so scared right so number two will be a mentor the third thing is just going in being patient confident and consistent most people that do youtube are not consistent most people that do youtube are not confident about their content and most people that do youtube are not patient to see the results right when i'm talking about confidence you you're gonna get on youtube right when i started that channel i got 100 views I knew I wasn't talking to anybody. I knew nobody was going to, you know, I had no subscribers. I, I didn't think anybody was going to see the video, but I was talking as if I'm just waiting for the crowd to show up. So you have to come in with that type of confidence. Like, I know I don't have a crowd or an audience, but eventually they're going to show up. Yeah. Right. So that kind of goes with being patient, just being confident.
and what you got going on. So those are the three things, man, I would say. Wow. Number one, just making sure you know once you see your competitors on the platform, that is your blueprint. That is your roadmap, right? Number two, a mentor. Like even to this day, I still have mentors. Like you just can't, you can't go through this entrepreneur journey without somebody who's at where you want to be, right? That's exactly where you need to go. So mentorship and the last one, just saying like, you know, making sure that, you know, you're confident, you're patient and you're consistent. So if if we were if we were baking a cake, there's always a recipe, right? Yes, sir. What's the recipe to YouTube success? The recipe to YouTube success. Okay. So the thumbnail, I'll always go to the thumbnail. So that is the first thing a person sees. Subconsciously, they decide they're going to tap on that video before they even do it. Right. And I always go back to this. Nobody's ever going to go into a library, pick up a book and start reading the middle of the book. That's just not going to happen. They got to look at the cover. They got to look at the back and read the summary. Same with Netflix. If you don't read books, Netflix, nobody's about to go click on a movie to watch. They got to see the trailer, who the actors are. They got to see the details about the movie decide, before they even decide they want to watch it. Although when you go on YouTube, you're not saying to you know yourself, oh, I don't like this thumbnail. I'm not going to click on this video. Nobody says that. But subconsciously, you, 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 see, you say it in your mind like, OK, I like how this looks. Right. So your thumbnail has to be right. The reason why it has to be right is because there's this thing called a CTR, your uh, click through rate. So all the click through rate is, is the impressions and it's the views and it gives you a percentage in the middle. A good CTR or an average CTR is like six to seven percent, right? Typically what my channels are doing anywhere from 13 to 17 percent. So if a uh, hundred people see your video, you basically want 15 people to click it. That's all that percentage means. If you can get seven to 15 people to click your video for every hundred people that see it, you're doing really good. Mm. So after that, you now have to have the viewer hooked into the video. In the first five seconds of the video, if the viewer isn't getting an answer to the question that your thumbnail or your title, and let me step back and talk about the title. So your thumbnail has to be uh, spark curiosity, has to make the person ask a question, right? Ask the question like, ooh, like, what is this about? I wanna click it, I wanna find out this answer to this question, right? But the title has to add to that, right? And basically explain what the thumbnail is saying telling the story, it's just thumbnail psychology. Once they click on that video, the first five seconds, you're answering that question that your thumbnail is saying, right? That hooks them in. And then, so I'll give you a, an example, okay? So let's say I'm talking about how to make money online, okay? Or let's say I made, let's say a million dollars, right? How to make a million dollars online, right? And that's the thumbnail title, is how I made a million dollars in less than 365 days. As soon as they click on that video, the first thing I'm saying, in today's video, I'm about to tell you exactly how I made a million dollars in under 365 days by doing this online. Then I cut to my intro and then I, you know, introduce myself. Hey, how you doing? My name is David Omari. I made a million dollars in under 365 days. And in today's video, I'm going to break down into it. And then I'm going to go right into it. Like I'm not sitting there trying to get them to subscribe right away, X, Y, and Z, because now I'm focused on the average viewer duration. Mm. They're hooked in the beginning. But I know I have to get them to at least 40 to 60 percent, because if I do that now, YouTube's going to say, aha, they're keeping the viewers on the platform. We got to push this to more people so we can keep more people on the platform. Right. So now when you break down the play of how you did whatever you did in the video, whatever that value was given to that person that's watching it, right, that you hooked in in the beginning, you want to place that that actual like meat of the video in that 40 to 60 percent mark so that the viewer watches all the way to the that part to learn. And if they enjoy it enough, they'll watch the rest of the video. Now, you don't ask for the subscribers in the beginning. I know a lot of times people say, hey, subscribe to my channel, you know, when they first come in, don't do that. It's just wasting time. Wait till the end of the video to give them a strong call to action, right? Same thing with everything we do. Hook, value, call to action, right? So the hook, got them hooked in, we give them the value at 40 to 60%, and then we hit them with that call to action. So now, we literally are allowing them to say, hey, I wanna subscribe. Now we're asking them like, hey, you enjoy today's video and you want to learn more you know tips on how to make money online make sure you subscribe and we can't wait to see you in the next video now you're allowing them right you gave them a gift the treat was a content now you're allowing them to make that decision if they want to subscribe or not but now they're more prone to because you gave them so much value there's no way they're not going to subscribe so when it comes to the formula i just break it back down the thumbnail has to be right so that the ctr is high that hook has to be good and the value has to be placed in a, in a specific, in a, excuse me, in a specific place in the video to where the person stays and watches it. And so the average viewer duration is anywhere from 40 to 60%. If you can get them to watch hundred percent, amazing. Yeah. Right. And then after that, you need to get a strong call to action so that you can get subscribers and your channel can start to grow fast. So 
that's the formula. I can see why you make a lot of money on YouTube. Um, hey. I wanted to pull out my phone, but I didn't want to throw you off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, but I can go back and watch this yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, Bro, you're a wealth of knowledge in this yeah, space. Bro. I've been in it too long, And bro. I can see why, yeah. like, someone's just getting started. You just helped us from the beginning, but you're not just helping beginners. You're helping people who already have established brands yeah, and pages. everybody, bro. Be, to, be able to grow it. Art. So you're co are you coaching? Do you have a community, a mentorship, some way that people can work with you? To yeah, learn I actually have an event coming up. It's a, a virtual conference. It's going to be called the YouTube Automation Challenge where you're going to be able to spend five days with me, right? And I'm going to literally break it down A to Z in those five days. I'm going to have surprise guests, some big people on the platform. I'm going to be doing a giveaway where we're giving away, you know, Max so people can get on the platform and, you know, go crazy with that right off the jump. So that's going to be the best opportunity to Listen, really spend sign, time. Sign me up for that. <laughs> And I, I ain't never did nothing like this. You mean, I mean, this is like Zoom call setting where you're going to get to actually ask me questions and talk to me. And that's for five days. I mean, exactly. I'm charging like 30000 for a one hour call. Yeah. So that's super valuable. And that price of that challenge is nowhere near that. Like, go, go on, tell how much, how much something okay. that costs. How so, much? so go platinum if you really want the best experience. Only four ninety seven, but you get to spend five days. So it's like a hundred dollars a day. Yeah, for for a full training, step by step, like that's cheaper than a course, bro. Except you're teaching the course live, and so, I'm actually I'm there talking to them. You're gonna be in a group chat with me so every beyond, single day. So like the live training, is there a time that that like a Q and A? Let's say if you talk to me for one hour and I got questions, like because I would have a lot of them. Yeah. Is there a way that people can ask you questions? A thousand percent. Wow. Yeah, especially if you go platinum with that four ninety seven, you're gonna be able to ask me as many questions as you want. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's super valuable, and yeah, no. So they want to tap in with that. It's just ytachallenge.com, but I'm sure we're gonna link it in the description Man. for. Them. Now, I'm gonna tell you why what you're saying is amazing. Mm -hmm. I understand when once people make millions of dollars to block off five of your days when you're married, kids, etc., is a major investment back into people. Someone might uh -huh. hear five hundred dollars, and it's like, bro, a hundred dollars a day for someone who has multiple channels, millions of views, mm -hmm. and breaking that. If are you breaking down what the recipe you just did in your five-day challenge? Like, it's going what you went into with the thumbnail, bro. the CTR, even bro, how to read the numbers. You said good. the impressions, the number of impressions versus number of clicks yeah. and a percentage of that. Like, yeah. bro, that alone. That alone can take you to the next level, especially if you understand it. Because a lot of times people, people don't understand, like, the YouTube analytics is like a human body. Your major organs in your body. You got your overview, which is your brain. Your reach, which shows that impressions click through rate, which is like the heart of your body, right? It's just like the major organs, right? And so most people, 97% of people that get on YouTube do not look at those analytics ever. What happens if you get sick? You get something wrong with your brain, something wrong with your heart, and you just don't go to the doctor. You just ignore it, yeah. right? But it's hurting, right? You're going to end up getting sick and you're going to die. It's the same thing with your YouTube channel. If you're not checking those analytics, if you don't know what they mean, that's like you killing your channel and eventually it's going to die because you're not even paying attention to what's going on. So, so it's just, super important that they talk got... about me like this because <laughs> you don't look at them analytics. You got to, though. <laughs> that's like, man, that's like, man, that's like literally like everything. That's like you're you, you grading the class. Imagine like you're going through a whole semester in college and you're not looking at your grades ever. Yeah. And then at the end, you like, oh, man, I got an F. How did that happen? You ain't checking your, you know what I'm saying? You ain't yeah. checking how you've been doing. So you keep doing the same work. You're going to get the same result. But if you're really looking at what's going on, you're going to know how to improve. So we got to teach you guys how to do that first so that you can improve. It leads, it leads me to like my, 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 my final two questions. Number one, you talked about how people can be successful on the channel. Mm -hmm. You talked about the recipe right. like for top performing channels. Yeah. What, are the, what are the biggest mistakes you see people make? Like if you oh were to say, hey, here, these are the top three mistakes I see people make that kills their YouTube channel. Number one, they don't they don't invest in the thumbnail. They don't they literally just upload the video and it'd be an amazing video. The quality be amazing. I mean, they got this whole setup be amazing. They get to uploading the video and then they see where it says upload a custom thumbnail and they like, what is that? And then they just click a, a frame in the video and it's like, bro, like nobody's clicking on that. Like yeah. this is not YouTube. 2008 where you can just upload a video without a thumbnail like you have to add a thumbnail that's like imagine buying a book with no cover yeah there's so that's the number one mistake i see number two mistake i see the first video doesn't do good they give up like they just give up and that you can't that's that's not how youtube works it's not overnight it but it's very very lucrative once you keep going with it right um the third mistake i would say is just getting complacent and getting comfortable um sometimes people go viral really fast 
and um, you know, they get the money and they go crazy. They don't invest it back into the business. And then now they're like, ah, oh, man, it's, I'm struggling to go viral again. And I, nah, like you just gotta know that, hey, you're not at that point yet to where, cause I really wasn't at that point until I really touched like, I would say my, my second, my, my 200,000, like my first 200,000 I made from YouTube. That's when it was like, okay, I've invested enough to where now I can really do what I wanna do, right? But a lot of people get on and they get that first $10,000 check, $20,000 check and they just go blow it. Yeah. So three mistakes I see. Number one, um, like I said, people just, you know, not worrying about the thumbnail, not focusing on it. Number two, giving up too fast. And number three, just splurging the money when they get it. What? So, how often should someone post so, on YouTube? Like, what's the what's the mm -hmm. rule of thumb? David Omari's here's David Omari yeah. rules for po for a posting schedule. So, old David would tell you upload every single day. New David's not gonna tell you that. Okay, um, I learned that you want to make sure that you're just consistent on when you're uploading. YouTube channel, they got that from TV channel. When your favorite show comes on, you know what time is coming on. You know what day is coming on. Treat your channel just like that. If the Montez and Market Show come on three times a week, two times a week, they know what day to tap in. And if you stay consistent on that, then you'll consistently grow a loyal audience that's going to actually tap into what you got going on on your YouTube channel because they know the date and time is coming. And you also will see your highlighted moments because YouTube actually shows you in the analytics. When you go on the audience tab, it shows you these purple highlights. And the darker that purple is, that means that's actually the uh, area where most viewers are online. So if you can focus your upload schedule around those, it doesn't have to be every single day, but you know, if you can focus it around the hottest time people are on your actual channel, then you, you're gonna go crazy. You're listening to this time. <laughs> you're gonna go crazy. <laughs> so, okay, the dark purple. Oh, yeah. oh. You're gonna see it. Go, you can literally go on your phone and see it. Yo, and it's gonna show you. And it tells, so we post it now every, we post Mondays and Fridays at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Those are our two times. Mm -hmm. So we need to look and say, hold on, they online at seven and we might just switch that time. Yeah. At least test it, see what it does. If it does better, then you know you got a new time. If you see more results at you posting for at twelve, then that's fine too. Yeah. Well, lucky, lucky, lucky here. I just came and gave this man a lesson today. Monday, <laughs> bro. Yeah. You like the way that your brain works with YouTube. I now get why people look at me like that when I'm talking about marketing. I start geeking out talking about marketing. Yeah, people just bro. be looking at me like, like what? That's how yeah, I am bro. right now. Yeah. I, my mind is blown and it's so, so, so many other questions that I have. We're going to have to do it. We got to do a part two, bro. I, I was already telling you we're going to have to do a like, part two. Yeah. I want to do a part two that's strategy. Like, yeah. I want to treat it like it's a coaching session. We may right? have to do like a live. I don't know if this TV has it, like yeah. where I just go point to analytics and you go on the laptop. Oh, that would be amazing, right. we bro. Can, we can do whatever we need. Because yeah. I'm thinking about if, I'm thinking about if, if a per like if we had, here's my thought process. If we had three different avatars, Person one who's just getting started. Person two, finally yeah, yeah. just got monetized. What to do to get growth? Person three, hit a hundred thousand subscribers, but they're stuck Look, yeah, and yeah. now trying to figure out how to pivot and what to right, do. Right, And we kind of bridge Break the down every that. single one. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Man. Super valuable, bro. Super we got, valuable. We're gonna look at your schedule, man, and see when we can when we can have you back on. Oh man. yeah, for sure. I would love I'm to be here. I'm definitely tapping in to your challenge for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. I gotta learn YouTube. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know what I'm doing out here. I'm out here. Treating my YouTube like Ray Charles filling a woman's <laughs> filling a woman's forearm, <laughs> like I'm out here just filling yeah. her forearm. Like, come on, uh, little, oh, my literally, uh, you so Harlem night. Yeah, yeah, come yeah. on, seven with yeah. your stake and self. Yeah. Like, I'm out here rolling the dice, nice, bro. Man. Thank you, man, for coming and sharing value with yeah. each and every person. How can they connect with you? So you can tap in with me at David Omari on Instagram, um, David Omari on YouTube. Right. And also that YTA challenge, you definitely want to be there, guys. It's going to be an amazing, an amazing, an amazing virtual event. And I know I'm going to give a lot of value. And I know a lot of people are going to learn a lot from it and be able to create a different stream of income for their families. You know what I'm saying? And just go crazy with that. So definitely tap in with me. My DMs are open. And hey, be here. Let's go. <laughs> Say no more, man. This has been another phenomenal episode of Monetize with Marcus. Make sure we're at the end now. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sure subscribe. you press that button so you can keep up to date with amazing content, amazing yeah, guests. Yeah, yeah. Every Monday at 12 o'clock, you get me. Every Friday, I'm with experts in the space teaching you how to literally go from an idea to being able to create online income. If you need me, you know where to find me. I'll be over here minding my online business. See you in the next episode. Let's go.